too long this has been going on. Way too long. And now it must end. And that's what we're here for today. Woo! To call on you to bring that end now. Not tomorrow, not next week, but now. Come on. Come on, government. Do something now. Do something for those dogs. Do something for science. Make the right choice. Make the right choice now. And end MBR. And let's free those beagles. Let's get them out now. Yeah. Yeah. today is for this place, is for the Home Office. It is important, politically it's important for those dogs that these people in here understand that they are responsible. There is a chain of command here that goes from this Home Office down through the likes of MBR, the likes of LabCorp and down to the researchers themselves through the, the licences that these people give them. And I'll also remind you, if they ever tell you that these animals don't feel pain, then ask a very simple question. Why is it then that the licenses you issue have a pain threshold on them? Mild, moderate, sub-threshold or severe? Now don't run away with the idea that mild means mild, or moderate means moderate. Moderate is something you wouldn't want to go through, believe you me. And if you don't know that, then read some of the research papers are available about what's done to animals under those licenses. Most licenses are issued under the moderate ban, but moderate is not something you would want done to you. Believe me, it isn't. But again, these people issue those licenses for those animals and those beagles to undergo these experiments. They couldn't be more responsible. It is important we're here, and they have to feel the anger from us. And I urge that everyone in this country now, whether you're an animal rights activist, a dog lover, whatever you are, even if you're not vegan, even if you're a bloody environmentalist for fuck's sake, get up off your asses and do something for these dogs. Right? Do something. These dogs are suffering now. This is not tomorrow or next week. It's now. It's right now. And we need to do something about it right now. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's also remind ourselves why they use beagle dogs in this industry. There are a number of reasons, and it's a cold calculation. The reason they use beagle dogs is one, because they're small. Two, because they're placid. That's right, they don't bite. And three, because they're malleable, they can be trained. So in other words, right from the moment they're born, everything about their life is sold out by companies like MBR. And let's remind ourselves also, if you look at MBR's website, there is a catalogue. There is a catalogue there where you will see these dogs marketed as products. You will pay a certain price at whatever age they're sold to you, or whether they're pathogen free. And let's remember, the boss of MBR, Marsho Bioresources, was once on the record as saying, in a, answer to a question about what kind of dogs they supply, he said, and I quote, if you want a three-legged beagle, we'll supply you with one. That's what they think of those dogs. That's what they think of those dogs. They are nothing more than a product. A product to be sold and used by the research industry. And for what? And for what? Because we know we're told repeatedly and increasingly by the scientific community these dogs are not good predictors for outcomes in human beings, in drug testing, toxicity What's research or medical research. They are not good predictors. We live in the 21st century, not in the dark ages. There is simply no scientific or moral justification for the continuation of MBR's trade. 
and it has to stop now. This is supposed to be a country that prides itself on being animal lovers. Millions of people own dogs in this country. But explain to us how it is that if you went home today and took your dog and poured bleach down its throat or any other chemical until it coughed its guts up and died, you'd be arrested and you'd be charged with animal cruelty and you could get five years in prison and you deserve at least that. So how come the beagles inside NBR are not covered by the Animal Welfare Act? Not necessary suffering. It is just plain and simple torture for no good reason. And we are demanding an end to it now. Those dogs must be released into a safe future. You must end NBR. You must stop NBR. This American company has no right has no right whatsoever to continue in this misery, in this trade of misery and suffering. Show yourself! No, show yourself! The Chief Police know full well that their involvement with MBR is an involvement which means they are complicit, absolutely complicit in those dogs suffering. And they know, they know full well that they are going to die slowly an agonisingly painful death over 90 days without no pain relief. And for what? For a flawed science that the science community is now saying has no relevance. So how can it be justifiable for these poor dogs to go through that? Shame on you! but he's someone who's already speaking very powerfully and eloquently against the badger call and a lot of the issues to do with animal welfare and animal rights. So, you know, let's listen with respect. It's a man who's got a lot to say and a lot of important things to say. So I'm going to hand you over to Dominic Dyer. Thank you. I just want to say firstly, let's have a huge thanks to everyone that's been involved in this campaign, not least in Huntingdon day in, day out bringing to the world's attention this horrible, brutal company, MBR Resources, that we know breeds about 2,000 dogs in this country, but I believe breeds are over 20,000 in New York for this horrible, horrible chemical testing industry. So let's just have a big round of applause for everyone that's involved. Thank you so much. You know, people ask me, you know, about animal issues all the time, and I, I've been involved, as you know, in many, many campaigns, not least in recent weeks with Geronimo the Alpaca and then obviously Operation Arc that have taken up a lot of my time, but have become big, big global media stories. And people say to me sometimes, what is it about Britain? What is it about this summer? Is it a summer of madness? Are we all suddenly becoming encapsulated or, or we're actually getting so involved in animal issues we're forgetting about humans? And you know what I say to them? I say that animal issues and human issues are completely connected. If we're vicious to animals, we're vicious to each other. If we're good to animals, we're good to each other. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. You know, and dogs, to me, are just so important to us. You know, I was speaking a few weeks ago on the 9-11 anniversary, and I said to people, do you remember the first responders that went into the ashes of those buildings? It wasn't people, it was dogs they lowered into those buildings. And if you think about the Nowzad story and about Penn Farthing, what made people so connected to Penn like me was not just about the dogs, it was about the dogs and the people's story. You know, he did two tours in Helmand in the most difficult, dangerous situations where people were getting blown up, shot and killed. And it was the dogs that were taken in by those soldiers that get them, kept them going, that gave them a reason to be confident that there was something better to go home to. Now, some of those soldiers died and the dogs went home to the parents and that's what Penn did for them. And because those dogs were so special, that they were living memory of the sons that they'd lost in war. And that to me tells me that we have something very, very special about our relationship with dogs. We know it goes back tens of thousands of years, but they bring so many benefits to us. 
in terms of our mental health, in terms of our physical health. There's a centre in Milton Keynes that some of you might know where I live, where they're training dogs to sniff out cancers. Now, dogs have amazing noses, as you know. And rather than test on dogs and do such cruelty to them that we're here to protest against, dogs could save millions of our lives just because of their noses. So you know that it's fundamentally wrong to do what we're doing to them in the so-called chemical testing industry. You know that it's morally wrong. And you know that you have a moral majority in this country on your side. And you should be proud of what you're doing. Because this is not what a civilized country in Britain or anywhere in the world should be doing to dogs. Wouldn't you agree? Yes! And the other thing about the testing industry is that it is so fundamentally corrupt, so fundamentally ineffective. 90% of animal tests, and this is a Food and Drug Administration that will tell you this, don't work. Because we can't re replicate a test on a dog or a primate or any other animal and actually apply it to a human being. And we see that all the time when it comes to medicinal trials. Now remember that 90% of the dogs, particularly beagles we're talking about in this country, are used for medical research for humans. Around 10% are used for veterinary research or for chemical toxicology testing for pesticides and household chemicals. But the vast majority are for medical research purposes that fail every single time, cost hundreds of millions of pounds, and are helping absolutely no one. Wouldn't you agree? Yes! And we saw those horrible scenes in the latest report from the Daily Mirror, and thank you again to your campaign for getting these stories out there, with companies effectively just dumping dogs in bags into bins. This is the reality of this disgusting industry. But the fact is that Pretty Patel knows that the regulatory system she's overseeing here in the Home Office is not fit for purpose. It's over 75 years old. Yay! It does nothing to protect human health. All it does is it's a conveyor belt of misery for animals. Wouldn't you agree? Yes! The Animal Scientific Procedures Act gives a free license to animal cruelty. Under the Animal Welfare Act, you'd be prosecuting people for doing what they're doing to dogs in laboratories and universities across this country. Because it's unethical, it's ineffective, and it's hugely cruel. Wouldn't you agree? Yes! And that's why EDM, Early Day Motion 175, that Peter Regan and Ricky Gervais and so many people in this particular campaign are supporting it, is terribly important. What we're saying is we need a whole-scale review, an independent scientific review of animal testing. Because if we have a proper independent review, the findings will be that there is no place in the modern civilized world for doing what we're doing to dogs, to primates, or any animals. Wouldn't you agree? Yes! And if we learn anything from COVID, and I know the AstraZeneca vaccine did involve some primates in universities in the United States, but we also know that we got these COVID vaccines into human harms so quickly because we jumped a whole load of regulations for emergency purposes that would have taken five, six years of animal trials with huge suffering. So millions of people will be better off for having vaccines, but millions of animals will also not have suffered as a consequence. And that's important in any animal research, because the idea that you can bring drugs to market by killing animals in large numbers to tick those regulatory boxes is not something that has to happen. It doesn't need to happen. And there's no moral case for making it happen. Wouldn't you agree? Yes! And I know some of us might differ about vaccines for COVID. That's not the issue here. What I'm saying to you is this that when you are bringing drugs to trial, you'll get medicinal experts, you'll get pharmaceutical companies, veterinary experts, and vested interests always stepping up into the media and into politicians to say, you've got to do this, there's no alternative. These animals must suffer, it's terrible, but we have to do it. That is complete and utter manure, wouldn't you agree? Yes! And we need to call it out for what it is. And I say there's no country in the world that has got this right. But there's been lots of promises made by Labour governments, Tory governments, coalition governments over the decades in this country to sort out animal testing. And I'm afraid none of them have done anything that will bring this misery to end. Wouldn't you agree? Yes! And what you're doing now is bringing this back to people's attention. It's not acceptable that MPs fall over themselves in the House of Commons to enact new legislation to protect dogs about not being euthanized without microchip checks being made, which is what we've been doing with Tux Law, or trying to improve the, the issues around pet awareness on theft, and trying to make sure that criminal sanctions against people that treat dogs badly are made to such a degree that people can go to prison for five years. I agree with all of that. 
But it's complete hypocrisy to do so much to protect dogs on that side and then to turn the blind eye to this vicious chemical testing that's going on on the other side. Wouldn't you agree? Yes! And that's what we've got to say to people. If you stop killing dogs in animal tests, if you stop killing primates in animal tests, if we stop all animal testing, no one, no one is going to suffer as a consequence. In fact, people will probably hugely benefit as a consequence. Yes! Because all the money that's wasted on this research can be put into better human-based studies or non-animal-based studies. Yes. Yes. It's crazy to me that Queen Victoria is an anti-vivisectionist and she'd be standing by us now and 150 years later, we're still shouting to stop this madness. That should never be happening. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. Yes. So that's why what you're doing in Huntingdon, day in, day out, despite the fact that the police are spending hundreds of thousands of pounds defending an American company that makes vast profits from these animals that are treated so cruelly, is so fundamentally right. Because you are the moral voice. Now there might be many people that work in those facilities that have little options but to work there. But what you're doing quietly and determinedly is making them think every time they go to work about what it is they're doing and why they're doing it. And I hope what will happen in time, and I'm sure it's already beginning to happen, is that more and more people will say, I don't want anything to do with this horrible industry anymore. I'll go and earn a living doing something else. If I'm a laboratory technician, if I'm a scientist, if I'm a vet, I don't want anything to do with this horror story anymore. Wouldn't you agree? Yes! Because it's disgusting that we spent two weeks with the Prime Minister, the Home Secretary, the Foreign Secretary falling over themselves to help Pen Farthing, his dogs and his people get out of Kabul, when at the same time we're putting dogs into medical tests and dumping them into bins. That is completely wrong. It is hypocrisy. All dogs matter. All animals matter. All cruelty matters. Not just that it's justified because it helps humans. It's wrong. It's profit driven. There's lots of vested interests, I'm afraid, in the pharmaceutical industries, in the regulatory industries, and even in the veterinary industry that keeps this madness going. And what you must do, and all of us must do, is keep calling them out and holding them to account and saying you can no longer continue to do this. We know what you're involved with. There's no moral platform for you to stand on to say you're helping people. All you're doing is causing immense suffering for no benefit. No scientific value. And the science of all this matters, because they will say science always is on their side. No. The weight of scientific evidence is on your side. Yeah. It's on the anti-vivisection side. Yeah. It's on the animal protection side. It's on the decent, caring, compassionate people side. Wouldn't you agree? Yes! So you keep coming back here. At some point, Pretty Patel's going to have to let us in and she's going to have to talk to us. At some point, MPs are going to have to look in the mirror and say, we can't be good to dogs in so many other ways and we allow this madness to go on. At some point, the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons up the road and everyone in the veterinary industry will have to have a proper debate about the ethics of this type of testing. But it's up to you to keep the pressure on. It's up to you to make sure you don't let them off the hook. It's up to you to make sure the media is aware of this. The public is aware of this. Because silence is not an option anymore. The suffering otherwise will go on and it will get worse. Never ever underestimate the ignorance, stupidity and greed of mankind to go on exploiting animals. Because if you don't speak up, the suffering will get worse. So thank you so much for coming here. It's an honour to be alongside you. Thank you for what you're doing in Huntingdon. You are the moral majority in this country. There'd be millions of people here with you, they could be, but you're doing exactly the right thing. You put the great in Britain. We are a caring, compassionate society. We'll never give up fighting for animals, and we will win this battle. Thank you very much. I will give you um, a very quick update about the uh, piece that appeared on Mirror Online yesterday. I can tell you that already LabCorp are threatening the Mirror with legal action over that story. So, um, if you want to know how utterly deeply concerned they are about that, that tells you everything. They've immediately gone to their lawyers who have straight away threatened the Daily Mirror. The Daily Mirror are going to stand firm, I've got no doubt about that. Everything that was on there we stand by. And there's a real irony here because they're trying to say that the image of the bin with dogs in doesn't have dogs in. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? That's really interesting. Well, my response to that is to LabCorp, okay, take us in, 
They'll say pictures of what you do do with the dead dogs and we'll publish them. Because of course they know that they're the dogs. Or are they actually trying to say, we don't kill the dogs? Really? So at the end of these experiments, when you poison them to death slowly, you don't kill them? Well, all the evidence from every undercover operation, bar none, shows exactly that's what does happen. And if you're going to remove all the vital organs from a dog that's been poisoned to death, how do you do that without killing it first? Utter bullshit. bullshit. Utter bullshit. Not dog shit as they're trying to claim. Bullshit. Yes. Right? Liars. But that's why we've come here today. You know, we keep repeating this. But LabCorp at Harrogate, where that footage was from, are licensed by the Home Office. The, the researchers that killed those dogs, licensed by the Home Office. It all comes back to this. Always has done, always will done. You know, we keep repeating this. The campaign MBR is the face of it and the pressure has to be kept on. But ultimately, these lot here could stop it immediately with no hassle at all. And for Priti Patel to go on the record and say she did a couple of months ago after allegedly watching the initial MBR expose, she said she was shocked by what she saw and we must phase out animal experiments in the UK. Well, I don't like the word phase out because I've heard it 40 years ago and I've heard it every decade since. I don't trust it. What I want to hear from Priti Patel and the Home Office, we will end the animal experiment. We will stop the dog experiment. Nothing else will satisfy us. Nothing else can satisfy the campaign. Yes. The Camp Meagle must remain there. And you'll also be aware that at the moment we're about to be dragged into the High Court uh, to face a High Court injunction to stop the protest. Now, I've been here before with Oxford University. I know what injunctions are. They are ways and means by which powerful companies and individuals silence protests. But the law already exists. The police have already arrested people at Camp Beagle. So why the injunction? Why the need to use this massive sledgehammer to crack what is at the end of the day an irritant? That's what protest is. It's an irritant. It's meant to be an irritant. How else do you get anyone else to listen? Do you think the suffragettes would have stood there today and thought, oh, do you know what, we better stop. They're going to take us to court for injunction. They'd have said, no, we fight on, because what we're fighting for is right. What you're fighting for is right. You're backed up, not only by the moral majority, but by science, right? We have to kick boot science up the arse. For too long, they've got away with this cosy idea, well, because we've always used animals as surrogate humans, we all, well, we'll carry on doing it. No, you won't. No, you won't carry on doing it. Because morally, it's repugnant. And scientifically, it's busted. Yes. What the hell are you playing at? Yes. This is the 21st century, for Christ's sake. Long gone are the days when anyone could justify cutting up an animal or causing it to suffer in the name of scientific knowledge. It's just inexcusable. We live in an age of computer modelling. We live in an age of microfluid tip technology. We can mimic human organs on microchips. We can use those microchips to test the toxicity of a substance and gain results that are applicable to you and me, human beings. Not beagle dogs, monkeys, mice or rats. They are not test tubes with fur and paws. They are different. They are fundamentally different. Even primates, who we share 98% of our DNA with, are different when it comes to extrapolating the results to humans. Oxford University famously told us when we campaigned against the laboratory that primates were essential for looking in to Parkinson's disease. But then they themselves admitted that what they actually do is try and recreate Parkinson type symptoms in monkeys by chemically destroying parts of their brain. That in no way bears any real resemblance to the disease progression in humans and yet these animals continue to pay with their lives and with misery and human beings are also paying by delayed scientific discoveries by delayed medications and treatments that is unacceptable that is totally and utterly unacceptable and we should not stand for it we demand change we demand it now and the MBR beagles the MBR beagles are the symbols of that change the time has come. The time really has come. 
I've been here many times before, over 40 years of doing this, and I'm not waiting any longer. The time is now. The public have woken up. The MBR beagles, with their cries and their barking, have echoed around this country into the living rooms, the iPhones, the computers, and people who never even realised that this was going on. Well, now they do. The genie is out the bottle. It's not going back. We demand an end to this barbaric, outdated practice. We demand the freedom of the MBR beagles, and we want sanity, for Christ's sake. We want sanity in research, and we want sanity and proper ethics in our treatment of other animals. Nothing else is acceptable. Nothing. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks very much for... Uh, Thanks very much for coming today. It's really important to um, really important to to defend against this. I mean, this is disgusting. I mean, they thought they'd get away with this in the quiet, and uh, it's been the, the media spotlight has been brought on it. And the media spotlight's really important, and we'll come to this. So this department here, I, I'm not sure this is the right department to be handling this. This department handles criminal matters. Now maybe you might argue it is the right department because there's criminal things going on here with these beagles that are legalized. They're legalized. But I still counter that it might be the wrong department. And we'll come to that. So myself and Dominic, we've been involved with a couple of high profile things recently. So the first one was Geronimo. Uh, Geronimo the alpaca that you may be aware, aware of, um, who was effectively executed captured and executed in broad daylight. And then we took the media from that and we span it onto Nowzad. I don't know if you heard of Nowzad. They were yeah. pen farthing, very brave man. Me and Don worked really hard on that. To, you know, I went out there and got the animals and brought them back. Um, and what's surprising is that we got all the departments on board, all of the departments of government. And do you know what? Pretty Purcell supported us. Now, that's a surprising thing, isn't it? Pretty Patel supported us. So, the first department to come on board was DEFRA. I mean, me and Dom bang our heads against the brick wall against DEFRA all the time. So, another key element of this is the veterinary profession. Now, I'm a veterinary surgeon. 99% of all vets want to protect animals. Um, but the vet profession is a really important one to lobby here. Because every time something like this happens, or live exports, uh, you know, the veterinary profession has to sign off on that. Now, most vets don't want to do that. The vets that went to seize Geronimo in broad daylight, they didn't want to do that. I, I mean, assuming there were vets involved with that. They were ordered by their people above. Now, the people in... The, we had help from DEFRA over now, Zed. Whilst DEFRA were helping us, uh, the, the good side of DEFRA, we look at DEFRA like a two-headed hydra. There's nice DEFRA who want to go in, they want to support us with animals, and they gave us loads and loads of help, DEFRA. And we were like, this is weird, DEFRA helping us. Meanwhile, when we are doing that, we took our eye off the ball with Geronimo. I'd been down at the farm with Helen protecting him. Came up, you know, came back to London working on Nowzad. I mean, it's, you know, there's people involved, there's loads of children involved, so we were doing that. Whilst that happened, oh, hello, here they come. While that happened, um, the psychopathic wing of DEFRA, the large animal side, went behind our backs and they executed Geronimo in the, in the high, you know, in, in the whole media. It was the biggest, most famous animal that's ever lived, and they did that. And they thought that was normal. <laughs> the psychopathic wing of DEFRA thought that was normal. Do we think it's normal? No! Okay. Do we think these beagles being tortured is normal? No! Okay. So, it's very important to lobby the vet profession, and the, lo the vet profession wants to do the right thing. At the moment, it's handled by this department. That, this department handles criminals. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. So that's another thing that's really important is dogs are our ambassadors, the animal protection movement. Dogs go right into our hearts. People understand dogs. You know, what we got, the support we got over Nowzad wasn't from the left. Well, you might think, well, that's going to be The Guardian. The Guardian didn't do anything. It was the right-wing press. It was the Sun. It was the Daily Express. It was the Mail. It was the Telegraph. Yes, it was the Independent and the Mirror, and they gave us great support. But love for dogs goes across the political spectrum. People get it. They're in their hearts. They've met a dog they loved. Dogs are our ambassadors. As it turned out, so are alpacas. Um, and that's a new thing. That, that's a new thing. Um, 
So, DEFRA, the, the two-headed hydra of, of DEFRA. What I'd like to do, I'd like to see the licensing of experiments, well, I'd like to see them banned, but the licensing of experiments doesn't, they don't know anything about animals here. It needs to be passed over to DEFRA, to the good head of DEFRA. Now, what I'd like to see, I'd like to see DEFRA destroyed. I'd like to see the good head of DEFRA take that over and that department to be called something else. This is the home office, the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. There's something about being called an office that means you're a great department of state. And I think DEFRA should be one, but not DEFRA as it is. We need to lop off the psychopathic wing of DEFRA because those people at the top, they're all about money and they're psychopaths. And I've said that before, I don't care what anyone says, those people are psychopaths and they belong in jail. They belong in jail for the badger cull, they belong in jail for, for Geronimo, they belong in jail for all they do, you know, all this cow killing. It doesn't solve the problem with TB. I don't want to go on about that, but it's a hundred million quid of your money being wasted on killing cows and maintaining this, this TB epidemic. hundred million quid, billion quid over the last 10 years, utter disgrace. And that's the psychopaths at DEFRA, not the good people at DEFRA. So I'd like this to be transferred to the good people at APHA and DEFRA who care about animals. I'd like that department to be called the Environmental Food and Animal Protection Office and be a much bigger department, as powerful as this lot, as powerful as the Treasury, as powerful as the Foreign Office. Uh, so that would be EFAPO. I like that partly because it sounds like a guerrilla movement from Angola. But I also think it's a bit more snappy than DEFRA. So what I'd say is, to stop this, we need to get the veterinary profession on board. We need to get the veterinary profession on board to support this. And if, if it doesn't, if it can't be persuaded, we need the veterinary profession to be involved in civil disobedience. Now, that's unusual. You say it's, I'm being civilly disobedient here. I hope I'm being civil. Um, and, you know, we need that to happen. We need to get the veterinary profession on board to stop that. Because somebody signs off on this, and I bet they don't want to. And any time they want to come out here and say, I don't support this anymore, I'm withdrawing my support. Or, you know, any matter that the veterinary profession, whether that's live experts or whatever. So, watch this space. You're doing a brilliant job. Keep it up. And let's save those beagles, and let's stop animal experimentation, period. They're our ambassadors. Dogs are our ambassadors, and so are alpacas, and so are you lot. So, thanks very much. Yeah. This battle is every bit as important as the battle against slavery, the battle for universal suffrage, and the battle for civil rights. Time goes on, I hope we'll look back with horror, and we will be better people because of the way we treat animals. They are so trusting, they bring us so much love, and we owe it them back as well. So keep fighting, thank you so much. And it used to be legal to discriminate, you know, whenever you wanted against people of different color or different creeds. That's not legal anymore, there's laws against it. This will be illegal, and we'll look back and go, yeah. we lived in the dark ages, you know, as Dom said. So we've got to keep fighting. This will change. It can change things, and this will become illegal. Promise you that. This will become illegal. Let's hope it's soon. Yes. 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 Uh, right, we've got somebody else now. We've got Vanessa from the Animal Welfare Party who's got a few words to say to you. Hi, well... I don't have a, a speech prepared, so I'm sorry this is just off the top of my head. I was seeing everybody here, I just actually wanted to say how amazingly impressed I was when I came down to Camp Beagle in, um, I think it was late July, early August. I came with my little one during the school holidays. And, you know, I've been thinking most of my adult life about animal rights, about how to improve things for animals, and yet I'd never had the idea of camping by the side of the road next to a facility that breeds beagles. And I was just so impressed and amazed by the people doing that. You know, I, I don't know if I would have had it in me to bring my tent and camp there by the side of the road with the cars going past your head during the night. I, yes, is that you doing that? Yes, amazing. I'm just in full of awe for what you've done and what you've achieved. And obviously not just doing that physically on the ground, but the amount of media coverage that you've managed to generate for this, the, the kind of how you've managed to pique people's interest, people who might not naturally be people who spend much time thinking about animal rights, but they've seen what you've put out there, is connected with them, and they're appalled, because obviously they're appalled, because as most of us here would agree, in civilized society, there is no place for testing on animals, any animals. I know here today we're talking about beagles, but obviously 
We are also talking about all animals in a civilized society in the year 2021. We cannot be testing on animals. And for a long time, our party, but I'm not particularly here to talk about my party, but for a long time, we've called for there to be binding targets for reduction on animal testing. And obviously, the other thing we need to do as we do that is we need to fund and properly support the development of non-animal methods. And that is the part that has always been missing. And if there's something that anyone in this building takes today away from this, is that we cannot ignore this movement anymore. We cannot ignore this call. We must, we must move now to research and testing that it uses non-animal methods. And there are gradual gains every year around the world. We must take heart from that. And as Ian said, I do firmly believe, I know this, that one day we will live in a world where animal testing is illegal. I know that day will come. And thank you, each and every one of you, for playing a part in making that happen. Thank you. I'm going to get upset. <laughs> Yesterday was truly horrific. But we're all here today to fight for the beagles. And let's make it very clear, we're not going anywhere. Excuse my voice. <clears throat> they can throw anything at us. We are not giving up until those beagles are free and this disgusting, Yay! filthy hellhole is closed down. Yay! No one is going to stand in our way. We will get this place shut down, but we need more of you to get on board with this campaign. We need more animal rights activists to get off their backsides and get fighting for these beagles. We really do. More people power, please.
why this campaign is so vital. That is why the NBR Beagles are such a totem for everything that happens. We must not let those dogs down. They represent all animals that are suffering in laboratories. Millions of them in this country and across the world. Millions and millions of them. These experiments have already been discredited by the scientists. And yet this government, this Home Office, is still licensing them to carry on doing it. And we say no. That's why we're here. No, 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 no more. It has to stop now. It is totally, totally unacceptable that these animals are still suffering in the name of a science that no longer has any justification. We must demand that this government bring an end to this now. And we must become active to the point where they are forced to do it. They are forced to act. The moral majority is on your side. Science is on your side. There is nothing now between us and victory other than the will to see this through. And I believe we've all got that will. Yes? Yes! Good!